And then we will uh, act on the suspense calendar. The, thank you, Senator Denham. Uh, the committee, as well as Senators Price and uh, Alquist, will begin as a subcommittee. We have uh, two items on uh, regular calendar. Um, well, Senator Simidian's in the front row, so we'll start with SB 1268 on uh, toll bridges and um, disclosure of personal information. As soon as we have a quorum, we'll take a roll call vote, Senator. So if I interrupt you, that will be the purpose. Go right ahead. Thank you, Madam uh, Chair and members. Uh, as uh, I think uh, you know, Madam Chair and members, uh, the um, committee analysis indicates zero uh, fiscal impact on the state. So I won't need to address the fiscal issues because there are none per your analysis. Second, uh, Madam Chair, uh, based on the conversations I've had with you and your staff, uh, we have uh, agreed to take uh, two author's amendments, uh, one that extends the uh, compliance deadline for purging of data by six months from the initial effective date uh, of the uh, measure, and the other which expands uh, some opportunities for marketing and information sharing uh, by transit and transportation agencies who are uh, part of the bill. Uh, as to the substance of the bill, thank you. Um, as to the substance of the bill, Madam Chair and members, uh, it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. If you're a user of something like Fast Track to go over a toll bridge or to use toll lanes, you not only have given your personal information to the local transportation agency, which they of course keep on file, 
but your every movement is subsequently recorded and part of a database which under existing law has no protection with respect to your personal privacy. That's also true even if you are not a member of a program like Fast Track because cameras take pictures of vehicles going over those bridges in order to enforce toll collection procedures. This bill's pretty simple. It says if you're collecting that information, it shouldn't be sold or shared with anybody else. And every six months, you got to make sure that you purge the information so that we don't have government held databases of people's personal transportation and travel history. That's the bill in a nutshell. Number of uh, amendments to accommodate various concerns that have been raised. Respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator, uh, submitting my compliments on your wonderful presentation. We'll go to your witnesses. Valerie Small Navarro with the American Civil Liberties Union, and we ask you for your support of this measure. Essentially, people use fast track to go faster. They don't, they shouldn't have to give up their privacy t to do so. So we urge an I vote. Thank you very much. Next, please. Uh, that's the woman. That's it. In We're, you asked us to keep it brief, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm thank you so much. That. That's testimony in favor. Is there any opposition testimony? Here they come, and I will ask opposition to also be brief. Thank you. And then we'll go to finance. Uh, Madam Chair, members, Chris McKaylee on behalf of South Bay Expressways that operates the 125 project in eastern San Diego County. We continue to work with uh, Senator Samiti and, and his staff, appreciate the amendments on subdivisions J and K. Uh, we do support protecting the privacy of our customers' data and completely support his efforts to ensure that personally identifiable information is not uh, released or breached. Uh, we don't support selling it. We don't do that. Uh, our concerns deal with subdivision C and D, which is the requirements to purge uh, this data, which we think is uh, very costly, and it does not comport with potential liability concerns that we've expressed in policy committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKaylee. Moira Top, on behalf of the Orange County Transportation Authority, we too are in opposition and we also share uh, the concerns that the, uh, that the authors raised, that, that information shouldn't be shared inappropriately or sold. We support those provisions of the bill, but we do have very serious concerns about the uh, purge provisions. The bill requires a two-tier purge, either at 60 days or 180 days, yet the statute of limitations uh, currently that exists is a four-year statute of limitations, so we simply have a complete disconnect on how much, uh, whether or not we'll keep the information that could be needed um, during some sort of uh, a litigation or, or other contest of, of uh, fees charged. So we, we certainly have concerns about that. Recent amendments uh, related to the fiscal provisions of the bill uh, allow us uh, to charge a fee. The cost to the bill, uh, of the bill to us are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so the bill uh, does provide us the authority to impose a fee on our toll payers, but we consider that a tax upon our toll payers and we are opposed to those provisions as well. Thank you. Next, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, Brooks Ellison on behalf of Sandag, and we agree with the prior testimony in opposition on the purging. Sandag customers need that information. If you're going to have a, a reasonable policy, it needs to come where you purge it after you no longer have reasonable needs and for liability reasons and account holder needs. It really doesn't serve either party. And it's very important that, that that provision be amended. Thank you. Very briefly, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, Chris Walker on behalf of the Transportation Corridor Agencies. Um, we also are concerned about the purge requirements and the cost of the purge requirements. Uh, we don't have an issue with uh, getting rid of the data. It's the form in, in which we get rid of the data. The way the bill is structured, it would require us to procure a new database system <coughs> that could cost over a million dollars. Um, we would like amendments to ensure that the purge matches the statute of limitations right. of California's we understand consumer that. protection That's been laws. Said by all the witnesses. Any okay. further uh, testimony on the bill, pro or con? Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll go to members and then I'll ask Senator Samiti to close. Uh, Senator Denham, then Senator Weiland, then Senator Yee. A uh, question to the opponents and, and any one of you can answer this question. Opponents. But it seems like from what I'm hearing from the opponents, this is a bill searching for an issue. If you're not selling the information, why is there a need for the bill? I'm not asking you to defend the bill, but I'm trying to understand where the need is and, and what the expense of this 
I wonder uh, the appropriation Senator, would be Senator covered. Denham, if the author should take a crack at that, and then if the opposition has anything to add, we'll take a, a little bit there. I'd rather have the last word, Madam Chair. Oh, we'll give you the last word on your clothes, <laughs> but I, this is a, I think, Thank the way you. I heard it, uh, Senator Denham wants to know uh, what really the purpose of the bill is. So th just real quickly, let me briefly explain again my question. There's information out there that's being collected. We don't want to purge of that information, but we're not selling that information. There, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Den Denham, uh, there have been no instances of any um, of any inappropriate, illegal um, uh, disbursement of the information or of the data. We've seen uh, there there have been no. Um, no, no, file, no cases filed against us. There are no, um, no public allegations of those. So we kind of we, um, we, we are concerned about whether or not this bill imposes significant costs on us when there really isn't uh, a problem yet that has been <coughs> identified. And what would you use that information for? What is, what is it being used for today? The information that's being collected. Uh, it's it's bill payment information, and so in order to uh, assess whether or not. Um, uh, it, it's just, it's simply information on the, the, uh, the customer, the, the policyholder, that you have a fast, you've, you've uh, contracted, you've uh, opened up a fast track account. And so these are, this is simply account information. And again, the statute of limitations is four years. And so someone can come back three and a half years later and contest a claim whether or not they actually were driving the car at that time when they went through the fast track. Maybe their cousin was driving the car, somebody else was driving. They do file these types of complaints saying um, years later that they actually were not um, responsible for that payment. And so you need the information uh, in your files in order to, uh, to determine whether or not that was actually a person who uh, who drove through the fast track at that point. Just, just to also answer the question from TCA's perspective, the board of the TCA's value highly, highly the privacy of their customers. Uh, we are obligated, in addition to that value, we are obligated by the DMV and our contract with the DMV and how we use that data to enforce uh, the provisions of the, of the tolls, to not use it for commercial purposes. We're also uh, required by the, the credit card agencies to use the information in a very structured way. We have no problem with the privacy policy requirements of the bill. We have have already adopted a very strict <clears throat> privacy policy. We have no problem abiding by that. We have no problem not using the data for commercial purposes. We don't. That's not our policy. We can't. Um, so we hear you loud and clear. It, Anything else, Senator? And this bill is just addressing fast track, or is it also addressing if you're making a cash payment or credit card payment at a toll booth or any, any other type of payment? It's only fast track. And would this differ from? Excuse me, that's I, incorrect, but I'm happy to clarify. It once I, I was going to say, I, you know, if, if you if if you uh, pay by a different mechanism, you could end up within the system um, if you choose to participate and become a customer after the fact. And would this information collecting be any different from, say, I don't know, a bus pass or a rail pass or a train pass or even going to the DMV when you're collecting, when the, I'm assuming the state collects information at DMV. Is, is, this, is this type of information any different from any of those scenarios? Yes. Madam Chair, I wonder if I might ask my witnesses to come back now so we could respond to some of the issues uh, that have been raised. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, let, me, let me just get a handle on this. We, we wanted to have a, we have other questions from the senators. We're going to take those. Uh, I would rather have the author respond. I'll have one person on each side uh, respond if you insist. But we're going next to Senator Weiland. If you're finished, Senator Denham. I'm fine. I'll and then we're going to Senator Yee. Senator Weiland, go right ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I share some of the same concerns that Senator Denham has, and I, I, I want to say that I really respect, Senator Simidian, the work you have done on privacy. Increasingly, I find it something that I think is very important in our society. Uh, it's just that in this instance, where there's a public entity which does not make available or sell this information, which I think is something that is really pro a problem, um, and where there is uh, a cost involved, 
that would ultimately have to be passed along. And I'm one of those who uses fast track uh, because um, my district goes up into Orange County and, and sometimes I have to go even north of that. Um, I, I don't see that as a real issue, especially if it's the time frame, it's just a little bit longer, which is what they're asking for. Let me. Uh, any, are you I, and I, I want to make one, just one other comment. There are lots and lots and lots of areas that I don't believe you've addressed yet where uh, I think privacy is increasingly a concern, and that is the multitude of places where you know information is being sold. Yeah. Yeah. And it always was in an older day with mailing lists, you know, you'd subscribe to some magazine or whatever, and all of a sudden you'd get all this related mail and you knew they'd sold it. But now, in this age, it's amazing to me the places where, um, you know, you go to the grocery store and you have your special number. Well, you know, pretty soon someone knows what you, you know, what you buy and the value of that is, a lot of that is in the sale of it. You need to cut back on those Twinkies, by the way, Senator. Uh, I don't want people to know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, I, I think there are lots and lots of areas that I think really are important, and I'm just concerned that this one does not rise to that. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Weiland. Senator Yee. First off, let, let me commend uh, Senator Simonian um, uh, for this particular bill and, and your good work. I don't think many individuals um, knew uh, when uh, Fast Track first started. Fast Track first started, and I was on the board of supervisors in San Francisco. We approved it with the understanding that, in fact, you would not be collecting information about individuals' behavior, travel uh, patterns, and so on. That they were to be disassociated with names and addresses and so on. And that was the way in which Fast Packs was sold to us, because I was very, very concerned about individuals' liberty individual's identity. And so when we approved that particular mechanism to allow, um, you know, what, faster travel, uh, maybe to move traffic along, it was with that particular understanding that you would not, in fact, violate individual's uh, 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 privacy and freedom to move around. And unfortunately, once we opened that door, I think that the system, the authorities, have taken advantage of that to the point where I think as Senator Samidia noted in his bill, that you are in fact collecting that data. Now, I do believe that you have a responsibility to make sure that people pay uh, when they should be paying. But the way in which you're trying to accomplish that is in fact to violate individuals' uh, identity violate individuals, you know, freedom of movement. It is that problem that I have. You have a problem, but the way you're solving it is to violate our, you know, individual rights of privacy. And that's the problem. And I think that's what um, Senator Samidian is addressing. I think on the larger issue, you know, I'm very, very concerned about where the state of California is going. Uh, it seems as if Big Brother is here and Big Brother is on the present that they know every move that uh, we are making, uh, that they are uh, uh, watching us and they are keeping data on us. And that's wrong and we are participating in that. And my, no, my, my yes vote is to at least say, I'm not gonna be a participant of that kind of, uh, of outrageous behavior for the people here in California. Madam Chair. Any other comments from the members? And then, Senator Samidian, if you want to just address all these issues Thanks. and use it as your close, I'd appreciate it. And I apologize for the fact that it's going to take a little time, but I think you can see now what I've got to respond to. And members, I did not raise the policy issues in my opening remarks because this is a fiscal committee. But it has turned into a policy debate, so let me address the policy issues, if I may, Madam Chair. You may. To the, to the points raised by my colleagues. Let's take a big step back and talk about what are we talking about. We're not just talking about fast track. Yes, if you use a system like that, your every move through the system, whether you're on a toll road or a toll bridge, is recorded and kept in perpetuity by a transportation agency. That means that your movements over a period of two, four, or 10 years are never purged. Your movements are 
part of the database that grows and grows and grows with no end. But it's not just the fast track. You may have noticed if you drive over the San Francisco Bay Bridge, as I do, there's a sign that tells you how long it's going to take you to get to the San Francisco airport, about 20 miles away. Do you know how it does that? It does that by tracking that same transponder, that same RFID technology, once you move by the airport. So it knows what your motions are after you've gone across the bridge. And it's not just the folks who signed up for Fast Track or who then get tagged again once they go past another location. There is, as I mentioned at the beginning, a camera there that tracks everyone going through because in order to make sure that a scofflaw can't race across the bridge and not pay the toll, click, 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 photo, 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 whether you're a transponder user or a fast track user or not, click, 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 photo, 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 all right there in the database. So what have we said? We've said very simply, you shouldn't sell or share that information. And at some point, you ought to just push the button and say it's gone. The repository of personal location data in perpetuity is a fundamental violation of your privacy rights. This isn't their data, with all due respect. <laughs> Once the actions of the Transportation Authority are done, they have no need for that data. Now, I understand, members, that if somebody doesn't pay their bill, we can't ask them to purge the database. That's why there is a specific provision that says that if somebody hasn't paid their bill, they can move forward and keep going without purging the data. Does this data get accessed right now? It does. It's a little hard to prove who used it inappropriately because we'll never know who had a look at the data and what they used it for, but we do know that it's already being subpoenaed in civil cases and that's documented in press reports. Now, the two agencies that you heard from, the Orange County Transportation Authority and the Transportation Corridor Agencies who testified, who expressed concern about being able to serve their customers, these are the two agencies who just had to enter into a settlement to waive $40 million in fines and penalties that they imposed on their customers and pay up $1.4 million in fines and penalties because those two agencies who express concern charge Maria and Pablo Gonzalez, I'm not making this up, it comes from the settlement, who had past due fines, past due bills, by the way, of $60.14. They had penalties of $78,780 for their $60 past due. That's almost well, it depends on your point of view. Ruth Murray, she had $197.15 that was owed with penalties of $38,400. The reason she hadn't paid, by the way, was because she was deceased. But those are the folks who come and tell you that they need the protection in order to provide their public with the service that the public requires. Do they need that protection? No. There is a settlement agreement, and in specific response to their request, we have language in the bill which is before you today that says that their obligation under court order to retain information about unpaid bills, which is for five years in the settlement, is protected by this bill. We've specifically excluded not only that settlement agreement, but any other that was retained prior to the date. Now, you heard about a statute of limitations. No one actually referenced what the statute of limitations is that they're talking about. Madam Chair, they're talking about Section 17200 of the Business and Professions Code. So let's ask ourselves a couple of questions. Does 17200 or any of its subsequent code sections require them to retain the information for four years? The answer is no. You see the chair of the Judiciary Committee, Ellen Corbett, sitting here shaking her head because this issue was debated in the Judiciary Committee. The answer is no. That raises another good question, Madam Chair, which is, is there anything in this bill which is inconsistent with the requirements of business and profession code? The answer is no, and that's not my opinion, and it's not the opinion of the Judiciary Committee. That's the opinion of our Legislative Council, who we raised this issue with, who said, no, there's nothing here that is inconsistent. So the great irony of the request is that the folks who just had to perform a settlement of $1.4 million in payments and $40 million in waived penalties are saying, oh, please, we want to be sure that we can keep this information in perpetuity so that if anybody sues us again, they have access to our information so they can be more effective in suing us, which seems a little disingenuous on its face, but particularly given the fact that we have provisions in the bill that protect them. The issue has been raised about cost. Let me look to your own staff analysis at page two that says that with respect to the modern systems, quote, purging specified information should be relatively simple process addition to the computer system. What are they being asked to do? Push the delete button 
every six months. That's the expensive uh, effort that they're talking about. That's why the bill came out of committee 8-0 on a bipartisan vote when it was heard in transportation. And I, I point again to the zero fiscal impact. I would respectfully ask for an aye vote. Thank you. Finance, do you have a comment? Madam Chair, members of the committee, Miriam and Chinita with the Department of Finance, we believe that it would result in a non-reimbursable state-mandated local program and there would be no costs to the state. Thank you. This is a due pass on a motion by Senator Leno. Uh, oh, beg your pardon. First we need a quorum. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll call the roll, please. Kehoe? Kehoe here. Kehoe here. Cox, Alquist? Here. Alquist here. Corbett? Corbett here. Didham? Here. Denham here, Leno? Here. Leno here, Price? Here. Price here, Walters? Here. Walters here, Wolk? Here. Wolk here, Wyland? Here. Wyland here, Yee? Here. Madam Chair, I move the bill. Thank you so much. As amended, Senator Leno. As amended. Uh, and we'll call the roll on that. Kehoe? Here, uh, aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Walters? No. Walters, no. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? No. Wyland, no. Ye? Aye. Ye, aye. Six to three, it's out. Six to three, that bill is out. Thank, Thank you, you Senator Thank you, members. Uh, members, we have one other item. Uh, this is SB 1147 by uh, Senator Desaunier. Is there public testimony on this? On 1147. Uh, he has waived uh, presentation. Seeing no public testimony, we'll move it to the suspense file. Uh, so those two items are dispensed with. So we'll, we're gonna pass out the files here now. Uh, members, we're gonna move to the suspense uh, calendar. Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to, uh, it went to suspense. It, it's, not, it's not coming up. Uh, we want to send our best wishes to uh, my vice chair, uh, Senator Cox, who's a little bit under the weather. Uh, hope to see him back very soon. And we want to thank Senator Walters for uh, sitting in uh, in a capacity as the vice chair, the act, acting as our vice chair. And uh, another item is Senator Walters has a, uh, a plane uh, in the early afternoon, so we're going to meet her uh, expectations there and move through suspense as as uh, efficiently as possible. To the members of the committee and the public, uh, about 120, 120 bills were moved to the suspense file uh, during the year uh, as a result of actions taken by Senate Appropriations Committee. Uh, the um, general fund costs of many of those measures would be hundreds of millions of dollars. There were terrific public policy and programmatic ideas in those in much of that legislation. Unfortunately, uh, because of our dire fiscal straits, uh, we were not able to move every bill out. I want to thank the members of the committee and also the members of the Senate for uh, their awareness of our fiscal concerns and their ability to uh, 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 cooperation in keeping the bills on suspense. Uh, today we have 82 bills that we'll act on. The uh, general fund impacts will be about $3 million. Uh, we're also taking on several measures that will provide significant savings and economic assistance for Californians uh, by implementing the federal health care plan uh, and uh, job creation legislation. So uh, thanks to you all for uh, all your help. And uh, finally, to appropriation staff from uh, both the Republican and the Democratic caucus, we thank you for your very hard work and assistance. Um, we'll go through an alphabetical or off order by author. We're starting with Senator Alquist's file. Um, Uh, 
as I said, Senator Alquist, SB 890 on health care coverage, uh, no amendments on this item. Uh, we'll uh, call the roll, please. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? Leno? Aye. No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? Yeah. Walters, no. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, yeah. aye. Wyland? Ye? Ye, aye. Seven to two. Seven to two, that bill is out. Uh, Sergeants, can you let Senator Wyland know that we're calling the roll? All right, that bill is out, the file, that uh, the roll call is closed. SB 900, uh, California Health Benefits Exchange, also by Senator Alquist. Uh, no amendments, please call the roll. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox? Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? No. Walters, no. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? Ye? Aye. Ye, aye. Seven to two. Seven to two, sounds like a pattern. All right, SB um, 964, this is a workforce development program with high-speed rail, also by Senator Alquist. Should I substitute yes. the previous role from uh, SB uh, 900? Uh, that bill is out. SB 1064, uh, California Stem Cell Research and Cures Act. Uh, uh, Senator Weiland's back, good. So we'll call the roll on SB 1064. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox? Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? Aye. Walters, aye. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? Ye? Aye. Ye, aye. What, one moment, please. Denham, aye. Denham, aye. Uh, Wyland, aye. Wyland, aye. Tend to zero, it's out. 10 to 0, that bill is out. I think that's... All right, uh, SB 1236, Medi-Cal Utilization Control, will substitute the role from uh, SB 900. Se 7 to 2, correct? Okay. Uh, you got a third? You have a third. Oh, it was a unit? Okay, yeah. beg your pardon. So let's do that again then. SB 1236, Medi-Cal Utilization Controls, we're substituting the role from SB 1064, 10 0, that bill is out. All righty. Uh, we're moving on to Senator Cedillo, Public Utilities uh, Earned Income Tax Credit Information. Uh, we will s substitute the role from uh, 1236. Okay, all right. Would Right, right, we understand. Okay. <laughs> We're still practicing. Uh, we're, nevertheless, we're moving on to Senator Cedillo's uh, file. Uh, his first item is SB 1164, Public Utilities Earned Income Tax Credit. 54. 1154. Okay. So uh, without objection, we'll substitute the role from SB 1064. That is a 10-0 vote, unanimous. The bill is out. Next one is um, SB 1181, Transcript Reimbursement Fund by Senator Cedillo. Uh, this, we will also uh, substitute the role for SB 1064. That's 10-0, that bill is out. Uh, next is SB 1460, California DREAM Act. Uh, be aware this is amended to delay implementation until July 1, 2011. Uh, but allow students uh, to receive aid funded privately as of January 1, 2011. And we're gonna call the roll. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? No. Walters, no. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? 
What and know ye? Aye. Ye aye. Seven to three. Seven to three, that bill is out. All right, so now we've got our B call. All right. Now we have a new one. Senator Corbett is next. Uh, there was an error, so you have an extra page there revised. This is Corbett now, Senator Corbett. SB 970, uh, author's amendments to make permissive. We will um, substitute the roll from 1460-73. That bill is out. Next is SB 1031, medical malpractice insurance, volunteer physicians and surgeons. This has been amended per the author to ensure special fund source. Uh, we will uh, call the, refer to the roll on SB 1064. That is 10 zero and that bill is out. SB uh, 1098 has to do with athlete agents. Uh, we'll substitute the role from SB 1460, that is 7-3, that bill is out. SB 1205, the Bay Area Disaster Recovery Planning Council. This has amendments per author to eliminate state staff requirements and the grant program to ma and makes other clarifying changes. Uh, we will substitute the role from 1460, that's 7-3, that bill is out. Uh, next is SB 1231, uh, public contracts uh, by state agencies uh, banning sweatshop labor. There's no amendments. We will substitute the roll from 1460, 73. That bill is out. All righty. Next author is Senator Correa. Three items. SB, 9, SB 967, public contracts, bid preferences. This is amended per the author to delay implementation and to strike requirement to use existing resources. Uh, we'll substitute the roll from 1460, 73, that bill is out. Um, SB 1296, peace officer training uh, for traumatic brain injury. Uh, we will substitute the roll from SB 1064, that's 10-0, that bill is out. Um, SB 1300, teen dating violence prevention uh, for school pupils. This has been amended to delete the mid-year notifications. We will substitute the roll from 1460, that's 7-3, that bill is out. Uh, Senator Cox. Um, this is a, a SB 1136, education finance revenue limit apportionments. This has been amended by Senator Cox to specify a limit on deferrals and to apply limits only to intra-year deferrals. Uh, we'll substitute the roll from uh, SB 1064, 10-0. That bill is out. Hopefully that'll help them feel a little better. Any questions? And if if. If there are any questions, just let, let us know. We want to be timely, but we want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. Okay, we're on Senator DeSaunier's items, SB 1157. Um, this is uh, Healthy Schools Acts, Healthy School Act of 2010. Uh, Mr. DeSaunier's amended it to delay implementation uh, by the schools. We will substitute the role from 1460, 7-3, that measure is out. SB 1202, statewide ballot uh, pamphlets identifying uh, the five highest uh, contributors. <clears throat> we will substitute the roll from 1460, S, uh, that is 7-3, and that bill moves out. Um, next is SB 1398, property tax shift related to a local power plant. Uh, Mr. Desaunier's amended this to ensure schools receive their share of the property tax and to eliminate all state costs. We'll substitute the roll from SB 1460, 7-3, that bill is out. Senator Duchaney, her pupil assessments item is SB 930. Uh, she has amended it to uh, delay implementation until January 1, 2012. We will substitute the roll from 1460. That is 7-3, that bill is out. SB 959, uh, this is a expedited permit review uh, having to do with development. The author has um, exempted small cities with her amendments and added state permitting assistance and eliminated guideline development. 
uh, will substitute SB 1460 and uh, the vote is 7-3, uh, that bill is out. SB 1249, contracting by state agencies, best value competitive bid. Senator Duchaney has amended uh, to specify best value contracting shall not be used unless the impact to the general fund is neutral. We will substitute SB 1460, roll call, that is 7-3, and that bill is out. We got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Senator Duchaney continued. Um, SB 1250, property tax exemption on base housing for single service members, not family, um, not family housing. This um, has been amended to specify all housing units must be occupied by active duty military personnel uh, and their dependents and strike the retroactivity clause. Uh, we will um, call the roll, or I mean substitute the roll from SB 1064, that's 10-0, that bill is out. SB 1284, water quality mandatory, minimum civil penalties. Uh, Senator Duchaney um, has narrowed the bill with her exemptions, uh, uh, has narrowed the exemptions rather, and amended to add a five-year sunset. So we'll go, uh, we'll, call, we'll substitute the roll from 1064, that's 10-0, and that measure is out. Senator Dutton, state fiscal analysis. Uh, this is SB 1160. Uh, Senator Dutton's amended uh, to eliminate analyses of regulations and added amendments to include uh, analysis of program reductions. Uh, we will substitute the roll from 1064. Uh, that measure is out on a 10-0 vote. Senator Flores, SB 834, this is uh, court orders prohibiting communications uh, on, about minor victims of crime. Uh, Senator Flores has, has amended it to remove uh, co-workers from the court orders and uh, remove provisions that specifies uh, the language requesting, encouraging, or instructing uh, having to do with communicating with another person. Uh, we will substitute the role from SB 1064. That measure moves out on a 10-0 vote. Um, SB 837 having to do with uh, smart meters uh, and utility service. It's been amended per the author to limit the scope of the bill to smart meter standards and make field testing a independent, uh, uh, an investor owned utility responsibility. Uh, that moves out on a roll call from SB 1460-73. Senator Hancock, uh, SB, uh, 1061 having to do with the San Francisco Bay Bridge Bicycle Bridge. Uh, we are uh, substituting the rule from 1460, 73, that measure moves out. Uh, SB 1091, Medi-Cal coverage for individuals in county juvenile detention. Uh, that goes out on a roll call from SB 1064, 10 0. And uh, partnership academies have been amended by the author to delete the uh, cost of living adjustment provision, and that will go out on a roll. Yes, sir. Be happy to call the roll. I'll call the roll then on uh, SB 1354. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Little I. Price. Aye. Price I. Walters. No. Walters no. Wolk. Aye. Wolk I. Wyland. Aye. Wyland I. Yee. Ye I. Eight to two. Eight to two. Uh, that measure moves out. Alrighty, Senator Hollingsworth uh, has SB 1179 free hunting days. Uh, the senators amended it to limit free hunting days to previously unlicensed hunters. Uh, that will go out on the roll call from 1064, 10 0. Um, SB 1293 is um, guidelines for vegetation management. Um, that will go out on uh, previous roll call from 1064, 10 0. Senator Huff uh, has uh, SB 993. Uh, relinquishment of State Route 66 in the City of Claremont. Uh, that will go out on a roll call from 
SB 1064-10-0. Senator Kehoe, SB 1177, uh, that's been amended to delay uh, implementation and reduce costs. It'll go out on uh, roll call from 1460-73. Uh, SB 1207, land use in the general plan uh, having to do with fire hazard impacts. Uh, that will go out on a roll call from SB 1460-73. Public Utilities Commission and rehearings uh, that will go out on uh, roll call from 10, SB 1064, 10 0. Thank you. SB 1455, plug in hybrid uh, cars, vehicles. Uh, that's been amended per the author to reduce the scope of, require, of the required website. That'll go out on a SB 1064, roll call 10 0. And you'll note. The public utilities rehearing, that's been amended also to extend new deadlines. To extend deadlines and make new deadlines apply only to uh, new requests for hearings. All righty. We're going on to Senator Leno's bills. SB uh, 1163, health care coverage denials and premium rates. Uh, that will go out on uh, SB 1460 roll call 7-3. SB 1200, health care coverage, timeliness of care. It's been attend, amended uh, per Senator Leno to require development of regulations by January 1, 2012. That will go out on the SB 1460 roll call 7-3. Uh, SB 1264 having to do with commercial airlines uh, and passenger rights has been amended uh, by Senator Leno to make the PUC enforcement contingent upon future legislative appropriation. That will go out on a SB 1460 roll call 73. Uh, SB 1291 having to do with flame retardant chemicals. It's been amended per the author to uh, reduce costs. It will go out on an SB 1460 roll call 73. Uh, SB 1413, last item for Senator Leno is uh, school food service areas having water. It's uh, been amended per the author to remove the mandate, and that goes out on a 7-3 vote uh, from SB 1460. Senator Liu. On 969? All righty. SB 969 has to do with uh, post-secondary education. The student fee policy will call the roll. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquest? Aye. Alquest, aye. Corbett? Denham? Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Price I. Walters. Wolk. Aye. Wolk I. Wyland. Aye. Wyland I. Yee. Aye. Yee I. Cor Corbett Cor I. We'll call the roll again. Let's call the roll again. Kehoe, Cox, Aye. Alquest. Aye. Alquest I. Corbett. Aye. Corbett I. Denham. Aye. Denham I. Leno. Aye. Leno I. Price. Aye. Price I. Walters. Wolk. Aye. Wolk I. Wyland. Wyland I. Yee? 9 to 0. 9 to 0. That bill is out. Uh, next is SB 1084 having to do with the California Economic Security Task Force. It's been amended by Senator Liu to delete mandatory state participation on the task force and it'll go out on an SB 1460 roll that is 7 to 3. Uh, SB 1143 is community college funding. It's been amended uh, per author to hold overall system funding harmless, uh, requires more groups be accounted for in the waiting factor and delays implementation until 2013-14. Uh, and that will go out on an SB 1064 vote. That is, we'll call the roll on SB 1143. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquest? Aye. Alquest, aye. Corbett? Denham? Aye. Denham, aye. Leno? Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? Aye. Walters, aye. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? Aye. Wyland, aye. Yee? Aye. Yee, aye. Eight to zero. Eight to zero. That measures out. Thank you, members. SB 1322, the food stamp program, uh, employment and training. Uh, roll call vote, please. This has been amended to remove section four. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquest? Aye. Alquest, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? Aye. Denham, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? Aye. Walters, aye. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? Aye. 
Wala Na Yi, Yi Ai, 10 to 0. 10 to 0? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm glad we got to the bottom of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are moving on to Senator Lowenthal. We're past the halfway point, members, thank you. Senator Lowenthal's SB 1169, health care coverage. This is mental health prioritization. It's been amended uh, per the author to specify notices of receipt go only to providers. It'll go out on an SB 1460 roll call, seven to three. SB 1193, school facilities funding, high performance schools amended to uh, require a local match. It goes out on an SB 1460 roll call, seven to three. SB 1396 will call the roll on this bill, which is education funding, maximum categorical education flexibility. It's been amended per the author to include additional pilot reporting, require the participants to provide for the, uh, to provide for the report, and specify that participants should be diverse in terms of geography and district size. And we'll call the roll, please. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Didham? Aye. Didham, aye. Leno? Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? Aye. Walters, aye. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? Aye. Wyland, aye. Yee? Aye. Yee, aye. Eight to zero. Eight to zero. That measures out. Uh, Senator Negrete McLeod? Uh, Oh, we, we can take him at the end, right? Because he's a, yes. that's the assembly. All right. Excellent. Appreciate your flexibility. Sure. <laughs> All righty. Uh, we're at um, Senator Negretti McLeod's SB 968 Unemployment Insurance Retraining Benefits. Um, this will go out on an SB 1460 roll call 7 to 3. Airport Land Use Commissions, SB 1141. This has been amended uh, per the author to allow counties to apply for existing grant funds to pay for establishing an airport land use commission and allow two years to establish uh, before withholding airport funds. It'll go out on an SB 1064 roll call. Wait, no, is that 1141? No, we need a roll call. All right. We're, uh, this is 1141, uh, SB 1141, we're going to call the roll. Please call the roll. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? No. Leno, no. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? No. Walters, no. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? No. Wyland, no. Yee? Aye. No. Yee, aye. Six to four. Six to four. That measures out. Healing Arts on SB 1150. SB 1150. All righty, SB 1160 goes out on an SB 1064 roll call 10 to 0. 10 to 0, the Healing Arts. And we're on to Senator Oropesa. Uh, SB 1066, uh, Inspector General for Corrections. Uh, that goes out on a, a uh, SB 1064 roll call 10 to, 10 to 0. SB 1067, recidivism uh, having to do with juvenile justice goes out on an SB 1064 uh, vote 10 to 0. Airport rental cars, this has been amended per the author to add Burbank, <coughs> Fresno and San Diego uh, to Los Angeles which is in the bill to obtain uh, reimbursement for Bureau of State audit costs and to appropriate up to $550,000 as required by Joint Rule 37.4, subsection B. Roll call vote on that one. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? No. Wyland, no. Yee? Aye. Yee, aye. 7 to 2. 7 to 2, that measures out also. SB uh, 1233 uh, has to do with the Safe at Home program and it eliminates the sunset. And uh, that goes out on an SB 1064 vote 10 to 0. And next is Senator, oh, still. One more item from Senator Oropesa, SB 1326, uh, SB 1326, California Conservation Corps, 
it's been amended by the author to eliminate appropriation from waste tire fund and to remove the reappropriation. It's going out on an SB 1460 vote, 7-3. Next author is Senator Padilla, SB 1440, California Community Colleges, uh, rev revising the student transfer policy. It goes out on an SB 1064 vote, 10 to zero. Next is Senator Pavley, water recycling, SB 918. Uh, it's been amended by the, uh, it's been amended to eliminate specific funding level and make technical changes. It goes out on a 1460 vote, seven to three. Um, SB 1060, 1006, Strategic Growth Council, uh, the author has eliminated the guidelines. It goes out on a 1460 vote, seven to three. Criminal investigations, interception of communications. SB 1428 goes out on a 10-0 vote from uh, prior SB 1064. Okay. Senator Price, uh, SB 1088, health care coverage. The authors amended it to conform to federal law, uh, law uh, the federal health care reform. It's unknown future costs uh, depending on federal law actions uh, and repeal if, if that occurs. So this goes out on a SB 1460 vote, seven to three. Senator Price's next item is SB 1108, uh, small business participation in public contracts. It's been amended by the author to delay implementation until July 1, 2011, and it's a roll call vote, please. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? No. Walters, no. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Wyland? Yee? Aye. Ye, aye. Denim, Denim I, yes. and Wyland, Wyland I, nine to zero, nine to zero. That bill is out. Denim was an I. Senator Denim was an I on that last item. The and Senator Wyland, just so we have the and Walters was a no. And Walters was okay. No. All right. Nine to one. All agreed. Excellent. Senator Romero uh, has SB 956 on workforce development uh, in uh, California school paraprofessional. It's been amended to revise allocation process. That goes out on an SB 1460 vote, seven to three. Uh, Senator Brunner uh, has SB 1085 on the 50th uh, agricultural district uh, in Antelope Valley. Uh, it's been amended uh, to uh, specify fair market value of the lease. And that goes out on the SB 1064, vote 10 to zero. Senator Simidian. Uh, SB 1245, HOV and hot lanes, uh, prohibiting prohibition for high occupancy vehicles. Uh, that goes out on a uh, 1064 vote, 10 to zero. Kindergarten age of admission, this is SB 1381. It's been amended per the author to restrict the hold harmless provisions and we'll call the roll on that one. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? <clears throat> Denham? Aye. Denham, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Walters? Aye. Walters, aye. Wolk? Wilk, no, Wyland, aye. Wyland, I, ye, ye, I, Corbett, no, eight to two. Eight to two, and that measure moves out. SB uh, 1425, public retirement prohibits pension spiking. Uh, that goes out on an SB 1064 vote, that's 10 to zero. Uh, SB 1431, County Health Initiative Matching Fund. Uh, that goes out on an SB 1460 vote, seven to three. Senator Steinberg. Uh, SB 974, tax credits. Uh, that goes out on an SB 1460 vote, seven to three. Oh, beg your pardon, okay. We're back on SB 974. That Last vote was my error. We'll call the roll on 974. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox, Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Corbett? Aye. Corbett, aye. Denham? No. 
Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, I. Price? Aye. Price, I. Walters? No. Walters, no. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, I. Wyland? Ye? Aye. Ye, I? Did you get Senator Wyland? Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I don't know. Wyland, no. Wyland, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to three. Seven to three. I thought that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. If you insist. SB, <laughs> SB 1283, we're gonna, um, we're gonna pay attention here so Senator and all of us can get out here right at noon. SB 1283, health care coverage, uh, the grievance system, it's been amended per the author to decrease special fund impact. Uh, it goes out on a 1467 to three. Uh, SB 1357, California longi Longitudinal Pupil Achievement Data System. It goes out on an SB 1064 vote, 10 to zero, uh, and uh, SB 1474, Labor Representatives uh, and their elections, goes out on a 7-3 vote from the previous roll call in 1460. Our next author is uh, Senator Strickland. This is the Public Safety Omnibus Bill, SB 1062. Uh, and it goes out on an SB 1064 vote 10-0. Uh, next is uh, Senator Walters, uh, SB 1065. This is uh, innocent spouse relief in the income tax. It goes out on a 1064 vote 10 to 0. And SB uh, flood, <laughs> SB flood control. No, Senator Woke has SB 991 having to do with flood control. Uh, and it goes out on a 1460 vote, seven to three. Okay, anything? Okay. Next item is uh, 1113. Uh, tax disputes allows the FTB to file a, an appeal in court. That goes out on a 1460 vote, seven to three. Very good. Um, off the Senator Wright has uh, SB 1032, audits and investigations and corrections. That goes out on a SB 1064 vote, 10 to zero. Senator Wyland has uh, curriculum frameworks, uh, revisions, and it's been amended per the author to eliminate the requirement to adopt instructional materials. That goes out on a 1064 vote, 10 to zero. And um, Senator Yee has uh, SB 1140, one-stop registration and voting. It's been amended per the author to make technical changes and to amend to limit to counties uh, election offices only. Uh, and that goes out on a 7-3 vote to uh, 1460. That concludes our file. Meeting's adjourned. Oh, oh beg your pardon. And where is it? Okay, there we go. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, AB 155, local bankruptcies. This has been amended by the author to strike the ability to commission, uh, uh, strike the ability of commission to impose conditions, and we'll take a roll call vote on this. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Cox? Alquest? Alquest, aye. Corbett? Corbett, aye. Denham? No. Denham, no. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Price? Price I. Walters? No. Walters, no. Wolk? No. Wolk, no. Wyland? No. Wyland, no. Yee? Aye. Yee, aye. 624. Six, excuse me. Six to four, that bill is out. That concludes the files, members. Um, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.